Because when you're living your life in the fast lane, you think things getting better every day. And then one day, ah, uh, you take a fall and you find that you can't win it all. What's up, little Benny? Cat in the hat. Little go go intro. Salute to little Benny. Would have been the masses, red essence, proper utensils, everywhere with little Benny put his mark down. We're going to get into this T Mott Go Go documentary. It's called Inside the Pocket. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to everybody out there. This is Money Green with Shades on the Mic. And we are Lyrics and Lies. So, my girl Shades had a good time watching this documentary, I'm sure. I don't know. We haven't discussed it yet, but <laughs> what did you think about the documentary Inside the Pocket? I thought it was very interesting. Um, I actually um, learned a lot of stuff out of this, too. I, um, I see that. The, I can't think of the gentleman's name right now. And I know you know because uh, Money Green was a part of the documentary, y'all. I was in there? Yes, he was oh, in the documentary. So that means that right. everybody need to check out that. It was on what, Amazon? It's on Amazon Prime. And you need to check right. it out. He that's, was in there about three, four times. That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> it's inside the pocket <laughs> on Amazon Prime. <laughs> and the guy you're talking about is Kato Hammond. Kato Hammond. Right. He was above, he was before his time. Right. Um, with getting the information out about Gogo. He he was in the he knows everything the ins and out about Gogo because he was in the groups. He was around Gogo. He was the man on the Gogo scene. Right. Now he's a Gogo historian, so yeah. He's not a man or he wasn't a man or the man on the scene in the sense of being on the level of Chuck Brown. No. Little Benny, Big G we can keep going all day long. Pratt, Bugs, James Funk, Sugar Bear, Big Tony. He wasn't like that, but he was in. He was in few, the know. He was in a few groups, but more importantly, he was a major fan before he was in the groups. And not only did he go to a lot of shows, I and mean, he was always in the go going to show. So that means he was in the know. Well, he was in the know, but right. he saved the music. And he preserved the music. Yeah. And he, he just got involved with everything. So it's amazing how much stuff he knows as far as who played for whom, who played this instrument, when they played there, where did they go when they left there, where did they come from before they went to that group. It's just amazing. And how would you know that Money Green because you did what? What was your, contribut your co contribution to this? Please let the people I, know. I am down as a co-producer mm -hmm. of this documentary and inside the pocket on Amazon Prime. No, but seriously. <laughs> you see he plugging it in. Yes, but, and the but book. It, it is a good documentary, but oh, uh, you said the book? Mm -hmm. Oh, so Cato Hammond is the man behind the documentary. He's the main person behind the documentary and he's the force that drives the documentary. He's everything, the centerpiece of what the documentary is about. And he released a book uh, a couple of years ago titled Take Me Out to the Go-Go. Yep. And I am the editor hey. of that book. And his book is uh, sort of a, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's an autobiography. And I help a lot of people that want to write books, be an autobiography or novel. Yeah, well, I had to plug you on that because you was a that. part of this whole... Um, documentary they yes. actually interviewed money green about a couple of times in the um i'll say three times three times yeah, they interviewed at, him at three times. in in this um documentary so he he was able to put his stamp on it tell us some more about the documentary because you said you learned a lot well i learned a little a lot about the go-go scene that i really didn't know um with the different i mean with the different uh ins and out and 
I cannot think of everybody's name, y'all. I'm at a loss for names, and and that's <laughs> that's shocking because I usually know everybody's name you or something. Take notes, where your notes? I know, but <laughs> I, the, the young lady that was um in the in one of the groups, she was one of the first ladies. Okay. Who who um did a go go with you know because usually it's all men. Right. And she was one of the first ladies who graced you know, the stage. And and I should know her name because I said it a couple of times on my way here, but for, for, she it fails me. They interviewed her. She was interviewed. All right, I can't think of all the people. Because she also- Was it Sweet Cherie? Was it Cherie? It might be Sweet Cherie, because she paid homage to some other women on there too, who okay. after her, then it started being women, women that are doing go-go. Right. You know? Now, a little caveat to that, a lot of people don't know that Michelle and the Gail Cello used to be in the go-go group. Oh, no, I didn't even yes. know that. And she used to also be a part of Lil B and the Master sometimes. Byron Jackson, who played with Essence for the longest time and uh, familiar faces, they call him BJ, passed away a, a couple of years ago, but he and Michelle and the Gail Cello were friends. They grew up together. So he would get her to come over sometimes too, not to mention whomever else she knew. But there are a lot of there are a lot of women, so I, I'm wondering who it is you're thinking about. Yeah, I can't think of her her name, and you might be right, but she was like one of the first because, at, you know, Gogo -Go was not saying that was it was sex or anything. It was just you can say that it was man. It was men. Men. That, good, well, if you think about all of the Gogo -Go bands that you just mentioned, it's all men. But what you're saying is. A, a, a good topic for another time. For another but time. is go go sexist or how sexist is it? Or how is it now compared to how it was originally? Because I interviewed Natasha or Lil Boogie from Pleasure, Lady mm. Congos for Pleasure or Congas, and she plays with Belladonna now. That's my but group, Belladonna. She was talking about how sexist things were back then. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm sure they still experience it, but they've made their way now and they are more experienced than a lot of the people coming up. But that would be a good topic. Yeah. How sexy is the music scene or the, or the live music scene? The name is true to us, to what's going on on the scene in the documentary. So um, it, it talked about how uh, he also had a magazine. Kato. Kato. Right. So Timon Go Go is the Take Me Out to the Go Go, Go. magazine. So originally magazine. it came out as a magazine right. in the late night. But it was too long. Right. So right. that's why you had to have that. That name was too long. Yeah. He had a web page back then that would say Take Me Out to the Go Go magazine or whatever. And after a while, he would say, No, let's cut this down. So it became Timon Go Go. Some people still call it Timon, but it's really Timon Go Go. So, what else so, what else? so I learned a lot about the magazine, and I think that brought the the communities to kind of understand what GoGo -Go was and what GoGo -Go is, where the stand for. He had been, I mean, he was everywhere. Wherever GoGo -Go was happening, Cato was there. That's right. Cato wrote about it. You knew about it. You understand. Stood about it. If you didn't know GoGo, -Go, <laughs> then you in the wrong part of town because you will know what GoGo -Go was, and. Because we're in this, um, you know, we're in the in, um, DMV area, we know about GoGo. -Go. We know how, right. you know, everywhere, back in the day in the 90s and stuff, 80s, GoGo -Go was the thing. If you wasn't at a GoGo uh, -Go party, you wasn't on the scene. Or a GoGo, -Go, but for you. Or a GoGo. -Go. She, she's telling you like it's a party. party for those who don't It is a party, though. So GoGo -Go rep is the name of the genre. But it's a party. And the music. And Gogo -Go is also the name of the event. Mm -hmm. If it's nothing but Gogo -Go bands playing there. And now you know how Gogo -Go can go on. Gogo -Go can go on for hours. Can go on for, for to hours. the point that you don't even know when the song ends and starts. Right, and that frustrates a lot of out of towners <laughs> or people who aren't new to it who are new to it because they say, wait a minute, it's a new song, but the music keeps going. Most bands will play a song or groups, whatever. Artists, they play a song, and they stop, people clap, and they say, yeah, y'all like that? And they'll go into the next one. 
there is no pause <laughs> and, and this go. keeps the party going <laughs> this keeps the dancing going so if you start a song at nine o'clock you're gonna play several songs because the music never stops so you're gonna go into different songs and the sound is gonna change and the lyrics are gonna change and it may be 45 50 minutes an hour and 10 15 yep. minutes later and the music hasn't stopped so you waiting for a bathroom break you in for a, a second thought <laughs> a rude awakening because you might as well go here to the bathroom right and, come, and the music's playing while you're in the bathroom you're here in the bathroom so uh so that's how the genre goes and uh, it's it's it was fun doing the documentary you had people who put a lot of work into it so not just Cato, but, you but he had, had a lot of people on his team he had uh, Preston Blue. Preston mm-hmm. just passed away a few years ago, and that that was sad. That hurts. Uh, had uh, to hear Agent Ninety Nine. Agent Ninety Nine. Yeah. And then that's when they went to the radio too. They went to radio. And she's a doctor now, by the way. Yeah. So shout out to her, Doctor Tahira Madi, mm-hmm. doing her thing. Very brilliant mind. Yep. Uh, Mark, A.K.A. Tiago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Weez. I grew up with Weez and C. Pleasant. Everybody had a name. Um, right. And uh, who else? Um, Bobby Met- Westmoreland. You had Jennifer. Oh, Shantae. This is not the one that played in the group, but another Flash Shantae. Maya. Nina. So they really put their marks down. And I don't think Nina made the documentary, but she definitely put in major work. Uh, so it's a lot of people. So you had this magazine and you had the people that I named going out interviewing people uh, sitting in on shows rating the shows telling everybody what happened on the scene because you can't be at two places at once so if you got to be at work or you have one go-go there's another go-go over here taking place in southeast and you in northeast so they had people writing about different shows that are taking place at the same time mm-hmm. so it, it, it's very groundbreaking what what T Mod did way ahead of his time, like you said. Then you had the awards that came out with the T Mod Go Go Awards, and that was at the Lincoln Theater. And you had all these major people to come out and get the awards. Got awards, Sugar Bear. Uh, yeah. I think Benny and Funk got one. Uh, I actually was the stage manager for the one at the Howard Theater. Mm. I think that was the last one, uh, and that was on the Thursday night, so that was kind of rough. But uh, yeah, uh, Belladonna played, uh, Sugar Bear was there, Juju was on it. Juju, one of the coolest people in Google ever as a drummer from EU. Did the, um, did the Pleasure Band break up? Pleasure broke up a couple of times. That's a deep one. That's when I interviewed Natasha, she told me what happened from her point of view and uh, it put a lot of things into perspective. But Pleasure, when salt and that's and Pepper, one of the girl when, bands. When Salt and Pepper and Herbie Lovebug came to town, and they was talking about some hot damn, I got an all girl band. They really didn't, but they were just saying, you know, we're we're women, we're taking over, we're in charge, and then they bumped into Pleasure at the Capitol Center. They're like, wait a minute, there's an all girl band out here. We're right here, and they killing it. Mm-hmm. So Herbie Lovebug, you know, behind the manager's back, he tried to snatch the group. Mm. So he snatched most of them and took them on tour with Salt and Pepper. So then when they said "Express yourself, hot damn, we got all girl, girl band," is real. they had one. Mm-hmm. So he was successful in taking most of them, but Natasha was still in high school, and her mother was like, "Nah, you're not going anyway." <laughs> so she stayed right here in PG, and the manager named Charlie, he was a little down in the, in the press or in the dumps, like, "Damn, I." And got my, you know, pleasure was killing it. And we were just building up everything. Mm -hmm. Our foundation was getting nice. And then everybody just got snatched up. So after a while, Natasha saw that somebody else called her and said, you should come out here and make a couple of dollars playing with us. And once she did that, the manager child was like, oh, damn. So we still, they still checking for you. And he got his mind together and he built a new pleasure around Natasha. Mm. So instead of all these older women being with uh, this younger high school girl, now you had a young high school girl and other girls around the same age. Right. Put a new band together, so that they just slid right into a right new into it. pleasure. And those are the ones that have the songs out, like the Christmas songs and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. I believe that's that pleasure. The second. That's company. the new pleasure. Right. 
And, uh, but yeah, because that was my thing. Pleasure, baby. And then pleasure on the road. ended up breaking up. Again. But the second group, the second the wave. Second, right, but then you have Belladonna, which is, I think about half of the pleasure members. They started, and that's some of the ones from the first pleasure. Oh. And I think some from the second or whatever. Well, they yeah. Then they new, made up be with, Bella with because Madonna. the one of the ladies been in it for the long. One lady been in at that um, Belladonna for a minute, and I kept looking at her because she looked familiar. Which one? Um, she's an older lady. She's the one who always do the call and response. Okay. She don't usually do the. I can't um, remember her name. I apologize to all y'all. Uh, oh my god! I just talked to one of them because uh, we interviewed. Because one. one of them reminds me of uh, Beyonce. She, but she plays the keyboard and she sings. Okay. Uh, I can't. Sweet. That might be Sweet Cherie. Is, is that it? That, that might, might be, be her. Sweet but she, you know, they're, they're always at half notes. So I usually um, go see them at half notes, oh, and yeah? I also purchase their CD that, that I roll with in the car when I have a long when I'm going somewhere far. I heard that. Me and Belladonna is all the way down the street. Well, Sweet Cherie is on the keys. Uh, and they Natasha, got a bad bass player. Natasha still on the, on the congas. Uh, Claudia Rogers, she's on the keys too. Claudia Rogers is the, um, again, I'm not going to say and try to describe it to you. But, but she got the blonde also, hair. I think she's also on the, on the keys. Uh, I think you're talking about Sweet Cherie. She's yeah. Girl. Okay. And Claudia's on the Right. Inside. But it's two of them on the keyboard. Right. They got a bad bass player. Yeah, the, the she's girl's bad. Just bad period. Yeah, she bad, but she real bad for a bass play because you don't really see a lot of women. Yeah. Um, doing, but she's yeah. Well, you don't see a lot of women doing those things in other places, but mm -hmm. in DC you'll see, you'll it, see it. In Maryland you'll see it. But, but yeah, yeah, the bass player is bad. The, the league. Is the whole bad. group is bad, y'all. Right. Belladonna is bad. The I drama. like Belladonna. My little brother introduced me to Belladonna. Is that might be shocking? But yeah, the drummer's bad. The singers. Uh, Stacy sung with him for a little while. My girl Stacy. And she's no longer playing with them or singing with them, but uh, yeah, they they do their thing. So, mm -hmm. and I got maybe a sweet Cherie you saw in the documentary, but went from the magazine to the online the, the, magazine, and then the radio, then the message board, message with board the radio station. with the radio station, and you had some classic moments on that message board because before, right before Facebook began popping. That message, message board, board was everything. Bomb. It was everything. When I first stepped on there, I was blown away by what I was seeing. And it was so well organized. Mm -hmm. And everybody had their monikers or their names or aliases or what have you. And it just worked in the meet and greet. So T Mod had cookouts. Oh, uh, yeah. Meet he and sure did. At, at shows, different you places. radio show. Mm -hmm. So you had. Uh, Funk, when James Funk did an interview, Chuck Brown came out, yep. did an interview, uh, D. Floyd, Malachi, Red Sea, whatever you want to call them. They had some good stuff. T. Mott was, was, was killing it. And still, it, it, it has evolved into something else now, but everything it did back then still remains. And it's still there as a, a piece uh, or, or sort of like a corridor and if you need information on GoGo -Go, you just go to tmotgogo.com or you go to the radio station whatever and the information will be there or but if you need to contact Cato you can contact Con him Cato does lectures now we uh, I know I saw him at a lecture uh, actually we went to a lecture up in Baltimore he was speaking to some people uh, on music and, and, and def, uh, how GoGo -Go was in the 80s and how uh, evolved into the 90s then we talked uh, talked about that then he did another one here in DC at a library so he's all over the place still doing his thing you know what would have been a great thing for them to do now uh -oh. is have a museum yes yes and we've I been talking about would, that I think that would be a wonderful thing so that people can see the, the things that we that there was talked about in the documentary you're right and that it would be displayed DC, wherever, but it would be wonderful if they go ahead and do a, a, a museum of that. You're right, it's long overdue, and there's been a resurgence with this gentrification and everything going on at with Mute Go -Go. Florida and New York, right? Mm -hmm. And don't Mute Go Go. Yeah. But all these knuckleheads and people walking dogs and not wanting to uh, bow down to the music. Yeah, bow down to the music. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the thread of the city. That's the one thing that you can say. Uh, 
pretty much has been here and remains here. What you think I was gonna say? <laughs> Cause you're like, oh. Oh no, I, I didn't know. I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know anything. Yeah, I think a museum but, uh, would be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Our Go-Go Museum. I think that would be real good because we don't have that. You have the Black Museum, you know, African American Museum, but that Go-Go Museum, because DC is where it all started from, that is the enrichment of who we are. And right. I think that would be so good to have a, a museum about Go-Go. Yeah, you have a genre of music that started here. Right. In the DC, Maryland area. And it mm -hmm. would be nice to... Uh, pay even more homage. I think it's going to happen soon. Well, if anybody out there, Cato, if he hear us, think about it. Let's, let's see about getting that museum done. He's going to see this. He's going to hear this. As a matter of fact, we may have to get him on a future show. Maybe so. That would be a good idea. And, uh, and what's funny is he has a lot of strong opinions. Very strongly opinionated person. And there's a topic that we're going to do probably in the next few days on the show that it's really going to piss him off. And I wish, I, I hope we can get him for that show because he'll go crazy. Yeah. He'll go crazy. All but right. But anything else you want to say about it? I think that was it. Other than it, please, please, everybody, check it out. It's it's long because it's a lot of history. It's long, it's about two hours long. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really long. But, you know, do it. Don't do it on the time you're sleepy. You know, that that time when you don't have nothing going on, it's raining or something like that, check it out. It's, it's really good. Yes, and there were po a lot of politics, and I mean governing around it. politics. Oh, not I forgot about that. Yeah, it was. In it. So in the city, you had sure, so much going on with the, the, the mayors and the councilmen yeah. and the police force. It's so much I forgot about that going part. on, and you had to cut a lot of that stuff short. But it's much deeper than what a lot of us thought it was. And it's also motivational, inspirational, as far as uh, people actually putting a plan together and building something, uh, throwing caution to the wind and jumping out there. You have a lot of, uh, when I say team building, you have a lot of uh, leadership, things that teenagers can learn from. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I just, you know, older people, but young adults, teenagers, people in their 20s, they want to go out and start something and make their marks in the world. This is a, a great example of how somebody did it from the ground up. So shout out to Kato and the T-Mock crew, the T-Mock Go Go Morning crew. Yeah, I think I, I, I know I missed a couple of people, but it's all good. It's all good, so. Um, that's all I got for you, Money that's Green. It. And uh, Cat in the Hat used to do smack. And he started doing crack, and he never could get back. Take it away, take it yeah. away, take it away. It's messed up, and the cops busting him. Just say Run Joe. And that's another another thing. These oh, damn cops yes. always messing up stuff, because Mo and Joe were in the candy store, huh. you know, doing their little thing, you know, making a transaction behind a the door and the cops ran in and Joe ran out and Shay's on the mic she began to shout run Joe run Joe run Joe <laughs> <laughs> those lines. were the days y'all we rolling out money grain at between my sheets and Shay's on the mic that's S-H-A-Y-Z underscore between the rest of the words and we will talk to y'all later out